Moving on to a painting called Echo from 1951, just the subsequent year from one number 31 we were just looking at, and a remarkable difference in uh, painting approach and intention in this painting. Some things are the same. We're still dealing with uh, an unstretched, unprimed cotton duck canvas. We're still dealing with alkyd enamel paint, uh, this very fluid uh, black paint straight from the can. Uh, and we're still dealing with dripping but we're dealing with a different kind of dripping. And not only that, but we're dealing with now a monochrome painting. We're dealing with only black paint and no difference in gloss either. It's the same can of paint for this entire painting. Now, not so much dripping as this kind of, uh, well, moving dripping or flicking of paint that you see all over the canvas. And the origin of that is something that you see here on the upper left. Uh, and that's an eyeball. And those are eyelashes. And this kind of repeating little mini drip uh, with a flick of the wrist, perhaps, uh, is Pollock's vernacular for the dripped eyelash. Uh, and even throughout this canvas, when you're not seeing eyeballs, you're seeing eyelashes everywhere, over and over and over again. Uh, and here we have a, a more crystallized idea of exactly what that uh, little uh, paint application looks like. Still a drip, but far from these very sinuous, very explosive kinds of uh, very beautiful fluid paint applications that we've been seeing. Now something a little bit heavier and no coincidence that the figure is coming back in. Also no coincidence by this point, Clement Greenberg has effectively turned his back on Pollock uh, and condescendingly said, well, he had a good run of a few years. Uh, rather, this is what Pollock actually had in, his, uh, in, in, in mind all the time. And it was only in this brief moment, circa 1950, that all this tension in Pollock had been sublimated into an amazing way of painting, and by the way, amazing, amazing paintings. But rather, this kind of approach sees Pollock kind of coming back to himself, actually cleansing himself of Greenberg's influence uh, in his studio and later home, uh, and rather Pollock trying to find himself again. How, after making these breathtaking masterpieces in a period of relative calm, when you're not feeling that calm anymore, you can't repeat that. You can't go through the motions to, to have these empty masterpieces, quote unquote. Rather, Pollock says, I need to find some way to express myself again. Pollock, full of angst, so-called black painter, uh, the American Gothic painter, is back. And then, in fact, it never really went anywhere uh, besides this, this brief sublimation uh, period. And what we see here is, again, starting with the figure and then reacting from it. Uh, but a series of these poured paintings, uh, circa 1951, 52, only in black paint, sees Pollock really struggling with uh, this period many artists face this. When you have a major breakthrough, and you do a body of work that's very complete and very coherent and very, very strong, what do you do next?